Would you be willing to share like a small snippet of that you wrote that's been donated? I think it might be interesting for people to have a, a connection to the art. I'm just going to show what the, the two books, but I'm not going to read from um, both of them. I'm donating two, and the first one is called The Flourishing. It's the first in a trilogy of romances that are set in Leicester in the UK. And you can read them all as standalones because they each follow a different couple, but the people know each other, so you'll find little connections uh, in between the books if you do read all three. And the one I'm going to read from uh, is called Dandelion, and it's uh, actually getting released uh, in two days. <laughs> I just realized I wasn't, I'm not ready. And it's a historical romance, it's a second chance romance, and it's dual timelines. So it's mainly set in the 70s in the US, and it's about two men who meet again by chance in their 50s. And they um, met uh, initially when they were uh, teenagers and they used to be friends and lovers and then they fell out. But this is uh, about them reconnecting. And uh, the bit I'm going to read is uh, actually uh, one of the flashbacks uh, from their youth. No, no, keep your shoes on, Bobby instructed, laughing at Bill's confused frown. He went to crouch in front of his bed and pulled at the shoebox he kept hidden underneath pulling a few dust bunnies with it when it slid into view. He removed the lid and placed it on the bed, feeling Bill step closer behind him, peering over his shoulder. The radio had been a gift from his father, something to listen to the news and maybe a few channels from England as well. Remember where your family comes from. Bobby couldn't give a damn about England, where his dad had never bothered taking him before he decided to fuck off back to it on his own. But he still grinned as he unrolled the cord and went to plug it in under Bill's gobsmacked stare. He looked for a good station, and when he found one playing a nice and relaxing smooth jazz, got to his feet and extended his arm. A dance, my good sir. He didn't miss Bill's little glance backwards towards the door, checking it was closed. But soon enough, there was a warm hand in his, and Bobby's heart skipped a beat. He pulled Bill closer and slowly brought a palm to rest over his waist giving him time to move back just in case. Instead, Bill looped his arms around Bobby's neck and smiled as they began to swing to the rhythm. It could barely have been called a dance, really. More a lot of uncoordinated swaying about, grinning at each other and forgetting all about waltz and other nonsense. Who needed practiced steps when you could have the warmth of your friend's waist under your fingers or bump, bump into his shoes with yours? He would never have more. So that night, Bobby stole all of Bill's laughs and smiles to put them back in the shoebox later and hoped that they would keep safely in there, secretly stored under his bed for him to think about at night.